today is going to be all about exploration. We're going to be talking about how to map planet using the detailed surface scanner to find interesting locations on the surface. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to map planets and we're going to go through it step by step so you can follow along how to use the quote unquote heat map it's not really a heat map we're going to come back to that in a second and how to locate it once you go planet side all that stuff now the first thing you need to do is of course to fss scan the system we're not going to do an fss guide now i have a dedicated video for that i'm going to be linking that in the more info icons you can go you can watch that if you are interested uh, in how to fss scan the system but what we are going to be looking for right now is to find the bodies that are interesting to go to because not all of them will have either biologicals or geological sites on them. Planets that has this blue um, like border around them means they have an atmosphere. Planets with this blue arch around them means they're landable. So there's an, a non-landable atmospheric planet. This one is landable but does not have an atmosphere. Same with that one here. We have a bunch of landable moons and here we actually have a landable moon with an atmosphere. So by clicking on the landable planets, since we want to find something on the surface, they need to be landable. You can click here on the planetary information tab and in this tab you can see what lo uh, what features are available. Locations are more like uh, settlements, those kind of things, but features is what we're looking for. So you can see there are three different types of geologicals on this planet. And I think this one down here, for instance, has one type of biological on it. I'm just going to start with this planet here, and then we can move out to the little moon afterwards. Once we're getting close, we can go ahead and we can start the mapping process. First of all, make sure your ship are in analyze mode. You can see that by the blue UI. You can see now it's in combat. Now it's in scanner mode. In case you're in doubt how to switch between those two modes, you can go here to options, go to controls, go to ship controls, scroll down and find mode switch. On the mode switch, you will find switch cockpit mode as the second last entry. And here you can see your key bindings. So if you ever doubt, go and check your key bindings in here. You can see I have doubt to one of my joystick buttons as well as the M key on the keyboard. Next, of course, you're gonna make sure that you have a detailed service scanner. As you can see, I have down here at the bottom. You need to have that fitted. This is an optional module. And you need to make sure it's bound to a fire group. Once you've done that, go ahead and fire that fire group once the correct group is selected. Now you can see down here in the right corner, that we have an efficiency target for seven probes. That means if we can scan this planet using seven or less probes, we're gonna get a credit bonus when we sell the data. Only when you sell it, we fly back to the station and sell the data. But in terms of the mapping process, it doesn't matter if you use one, two, or 50 probes to scan it. The result is gonna be same once you're done. It's only the credit outcome that is determined by the efficiency target. We're gonna fire one there, and with seven probes, I'm just gonna fire them. I don't have to be super accurate. I have this engineered, so it should be okay. I'm just going to find a cube like that. You can see this little marker here, the little uh, the bar that goes across the uh, uh, the line. That means you're aiming straight at the horizon. So all of those were fired at those markers. So you should see those hit right at the horizon around, as you can see there. You need to hit the backside. You can loop probes around. So you need to shoot somewhere between the, um, between the horizon marker and the miss marker. How far, where in between is something you have to like begin to learn because it depends how close you are to the planet. It depends how heavy the planet is. I'm gonna fire one there, kind of in the middle, which is usually okay. If you're close to the planet, you need to go further out. If you're very far from the planet, you need to go closer in. And there we go, scan is complete. And we have a number of different, uh, you can see up here, there's some filters at the top. We have some lava spouts, we have some uh, fumaroles, and we have some vents. But let's move a little bit closer so it's easier to see what's going on here. So now that we are a little closer, we can begin to take a closer look at this quote unquote heat map. It's not really a heat map. It was intended to be a heat map in the beginning. And if you go back and look at old patch notes, it will also be referred to as a heat map. It has since been changed. The way it works now is it's more of our biomes. So you can see here, for instance, we have, for instance, in the crater here, we have this like um, blue, very pixelated type of deal. We have a lot of that around. And there seems to be a little lighter there maybe, but we have a lot of that blue pixelated area, but somewhere around you can see 
like right in front of us now, we have these like more smooth patches in the blue. Those would be two different biomes. And we also see we have some bigger areas up there of the like more greenish, not so pixelated blue. Um, some patches of those around. Those are different biomes. So that means if we go down to a, let's say one of those smooth patches there, we should have the same chance of finding stuff regardless of whether we go down in that one right here or in someone over there uh, far away from here. That should be the same type of area. Ah, now it's very clear. In case it wasn't clear up from um, from the high altitude, I think it's pretty clear now what I mean. You can see this smooth area right in front of us. We have the pixelated area surrounding it. And we're going to go down here in the, in the area right here. So now that we are planet side, it's actually very clear to see. You can see the physically see the, the limit between the two different biomes. You can see this has a more grayish color up there ahead. Now, a mistake people often do is they will go down, they will say, oh, I am looking out the window, I can't see anything, and they will fly around up here at like two, three, maybe even a kilometer up, and they will look down, they can't see anything. You can't see geological sites, biological sites from this altitude. Look what happens when I go down here. Just be a little careful, this is quite a high G planet. There we go. A lot more details begin to pop in now. And what you need to do is you need to stay close to the ground, below 100 meters preferably, even below 50 if you can. Slightly nose down, use your upwards thrust, and then just slowly move across, uh, across the surface. Don't fly too fast, because if you fly too fast, you're going to miss it. Now I know from experience that these kind of geological sites, they like to be close to... Um, Oops. They like to be close to like edges of mountains and those kind of places. So my guess is that we have to head over in uh, in the mountainous area to the other biomes over there and see if we have more luck there. And after flying around for a while, I did actually manage to find at least something. So now we can just put down our landing gear and uh, go out and explore a little bit. Well, at least we would be able to if the planet wasn't so damn hot. Apparently it's too hot to actually go out. Well... We'll have to make do with the third-person camera then. Well, there we have it. We have now successfully located ourselves a little bit of geological whatever puddle that is. <laughs> at least we found it. It looks hot at least. It's glowing red. Let's uh, let's head back into space and let's go over to the other planet see if we can find ourselves some biologicals. Here on the second planet, we replicate the exact same process as we did before by first firing probes at the moon to scan it. Then we move in closer to get a better look. And here you can actually see how the um, how the different colors map up to geological features. Look how dark the ground is at the other biome. So here it, I think it makes it a lot more clear that what we are dealing with here is in fact biomes rather than necessarily a heat map. And we didn't have to go far. As soon as I reached the surface, you can see those like, I don't know, patterns down there. If I turn off the light, maybe turn off night vision, they're more clear, not really. But you gotta see those patches there. Those are biological like patches or like bacterial patches, which is what we have on this planet. If you are in an Artemis suit, which I highly recommend you are, you can go ahead and you can get your um, sampler out. By right clicking, you can scan, you can see where there are things that you can scan. You can see how they light up green. That means that there are something you can scan. Moving up to it, you get the, uh, this, it turns from dust having like a, a little red dot. It opens up this little Diagram, hold down the left mouse button. You don't have to let go, just keep holding it down. Eventually it will log in. There we go. Now we need to do this three times, but you can't just go to a nearby one. You need to get some uh, You need to get some distance. You can see here, if I go over to this one, it says sample unavailable, insufficient genetic diversity. In terms of distance, you don't really have to go far. Often a few kilometers will do, so I would normally just go up and just fly in a random direction for a while. And then I'll do the same thing as before, go down nice close to the surface. And there we go, there's another patch right there in front of us. So, uh, and that would be two. And three, and he does a little animation, inspects the canister, and then it's reset, and you're now good to go. If you have multiple different um, biologicals that you need to scan, by the way, you can only scan biologicals, you can't scan geologicals with this. But if you have multiple different biologicals, you have to finish one type at the time. You can't store progress on multiple ones at once. So then if you have some bacteria, maybe you have some plants, then you need to fit to get three scans of bacteria before you move over and begin scanning the plants. If you begin uh, to move over to another type of, uh, of life before you're finished with, the, with all three of the first one, it will reset you on that one. So keep that in mind.
Now, if you found this video useful, I would really like you would consider to go down and subscribe to the channel. Statistically says that only about one third of you is actually subscribed and I would love to get the last two thirds of you on board for more Elite Dangerous content coming in the future. Thanks a lot for watching and also next time, I will see you guys in space.